Hey, I am your programming lecturer, M.M. Joki is my name. Welcome to today's class. Today I want to discuss about classes in object-oriented programming. So in object-oriented programming, data and the operations to that data are encapsulated into a class. Data and its operations are wrapped into a single unit that we call a class. Data here refers to the attributes or the properties that the objects of that class should have. Data operations refers to the behavior of the objects of the class. So to define the behavior of the class, then we need to ask ourselves, what can the object of the class do? Or what can be done to that object? That now forms the behavior or what you're calling the operations of the data, the behaviors of that object. Most often, the behavior would involve manipulating the data of the class or the data of the object. A class, therefore, can be seen or looked at as a template of the object. It's from the class that we create object. So the class defines what the object should look like. Defining the attributes and the behavior of the object. In a class, the attributes are declared in form of global variables or sometimes can be declared as objects of other classes because an object may contain other objects within itself. The behavior is declared in form of methods. So in Java, we define the method, which now forms part of the behavior of the object that will be created from this class. So we can represent the class using a UML diagram, that is Unified Modeling Language diagram. So we can do a class diagram. Um, it is displayed on your screen where it is a rectangle with three parts. The topmost part, um, the topmost part is usually the class name and then followed by the second part which contains the attributes of the class. That is the properties of the class. And uh, then the bottommost part contains the methods. So these are the behaviors of the class. So in other words, every object of this class should have the defined attributes and the defined methods. For our example, in this class, we shall use the rectangle class. And I have uh, displayed the class diagram of the rectangle class. At the top, we have the name of the class, which is class rectangle. And then we can see the attributes of the class, where every rectangle would have a length and it would have a width. So our attributes, therefore, here is the length and the width. And then below here are all the methods or the behavior of the class rectangle. So there are more than what we have just displayed here. These are just but examples. So some of the things we can do with the rectangle class is for instance, we can change the length of the rectangle. So the method set length is a method that changes the length of the rectangle. You can see that it is working on the data. The length holds the data the length attribute holds the data, it's the attribute. Then set the length 
is the method that manipulates or changes the value of the length. Then we have another one, set wing. It, it changes or sets the value of the wing. So we also have another method, get wing. So this method reads the value of the wing. So if we want to know what is the length of a rectangle object, then we call this method and it will tell us what the value of the wing is. Then we also have get length. And we also have other methods like get perimeter, for instance. If we want to know the perimeter of the rectangle, then we use the length and the width, we calculate the perimeter again, we provide it by using this method. So we shall discuss more on how to define the methods of a Java class. So in our next video, we shall be looking at how to create the rectangle class in a Java environment. Thank you.